Hello, this is Jared Niemi with a mini lecture on multiple regression. This is the second mini lecture on multiple regression, and this one is going to focus on using indicator functions to incorporate explanatory variables that are categorical. Just as a reminder from the first mini lecture that the multiple regression model is this model. Here we have yi is the response for observation i. These are assumed to be independent across observations. Uh, and they are normally distributed with a mean that depends on a set of explanatory variables. Now that we're into multiple regression, we have multiple explanatory variables, in this case up to p of them. And once we've incorporated these explanatory variables into the mean structure, the model assumptions are that there's a constant variance around uh, this mean. Today's lecture is focusing on a special type of explanatory variable here. So a special type of the XIPs uh, that we construct by using an indicator function in order to construct a dummy variable for that explanatory variable. All right, so let's just uh, go straight to an example to show what I'm talking about. Here is a, a simple example where we might have previously used a two-sample t-test, and now we're going to put it into the regression structure. So here on the y-axis is the humerus length uh, for... Uh, finches that either um, <clears throat> died uh, or survived. All right, so we have uh, two sets, uh, two groups of individuals, those that died and those that survived, and we're looking at their humerus length, and the main question of interest is whether the mean humerus length is different between these two groups. And so we can actually treat this problem as a regression problem, by essentially making uh, numeric quantities for perished and survived. So imagine that perished was zero and survived was one, then we could draw the line and the line might look like this. Right. So that's essentially what we're going to be doing when we construct these dummy variables through the use of indicator functions. So what does that mean? Here's the idea. The idea is that if you have a categorical explanatory variable, the first thing that you need to do is to choose one of the levels of that explanatory variable to be the reference level. All right, you'll see what that reference level means in a bit. In this case, we're going to choose perished to be our reference level. All right, recall that the two groups are perished and survived, so perished is going to be our reference level. And then we use, uh, we construct a dummy variable using an indicator function for the other level. So in this case, the other level was survived. So here is uh, the dummy variable. So the first explanatory variable in our regression is either going to be a 1 or a 0. It's going to be a 1 if the observation i is one of those that actually survived. And it's going to be 0 otherwise. Since in this example we only have two possibilities, it's either survived or it's perished. All of those observations that uh, are not a 1 here, right? these are the set of those that survived all the zeros are the set that perished. So we can often write this, uh, instead of writing down this notation right here, we'll write down this dummy variable as an indicator function. So this capital I is an indicator function. And here in the inside is the, um, the test, not, not a formal test, the uh, statement that we want to say is either true or false. That is, is observation I among those that survived? And so the indicator function, then, is just exactly what we've written up here. So the indicator function of A is, indicator functions are only either 1 or 0. It's 1 if the statement A is true, and 0 if it's not true. So here, this observation I survives. If that is, in fact, a true statement, then this indicator function is 1, which is exactly what we showed up here. All right, so these indicator functions are very simple functions. They're just 1 or 0. They're 1 if the statement is true and 0 if it's false. All right, so after we've constructed these dummy variables through the use of indicator functions, then we just run a, uh, in this case, a simple linear regression using this indicator function, this dummy variable, as the explanatory variable. All right, so let's see what that looks like. We just go ahead and run the regression. In this case, we used PROC REG. We have the uh, independent, dependent variable or the response as humerus. 
and we have the explanatory variables or deep independent variables here just being we have the intercept and then we have x1 which was our constructed dummy variable so it's 1 if you're in the survive group and 0 if you're in the perish group all right and so it's going to turn out that the interpretation of the parameters here the interpretation of the intercept is just the mean for the perished group, that is for the reference level. So the intercept here is the mean for the reference level. x1 then is the difference between, the estimated difference in means between the survived group and the perished group. So we've estimated the difference in their means to be about 10. Here's a standard error. Here's a p-value associated with the test of whether the two groups have the same mean. And this p-value will exactly correspond to a two-sample uh, p-value that we have constructed before. All right, so let's look at this as a picture. So here is exactly the same data that I had a couple slides ago. Now the dots are plotted in gray as opposed to black. And there are two parameters that we're estimating. The first parameter that we're estimating is the intercept, which in this case is exactly the mean for the reference level. So the reference, the reference level that we chose would perished, so this star represents that mean. That's the mean of the group that we estimated. It was about 272. Oh, sorry, 727. The a second parameter that we estimate then is the survived group's difference from that mean. So here's the mean. We've just extended it all the way across as a black line and now we've drawn a vertical arrow here to indicate here's the difference from that line to the mean of the survived group and that is our estimate for beta 1 all right so this is what the uh, use of an explanatory variable that is categorical in regression through the use of these dummy variables using indicator functions. This example was using two groups and now we'll move on to an example where we have more than two groups. So here's an example that we've seen before which was a canonical example where we used ANOVA and the idea here was to look for whether there were differences amongst any of the groups and we're now going to treat this data set as a regression problem and the way that we're going to treat it as a regression problem is again to choose one of the groups as the reference group. In this case, we're going to choose the N, N85 group as the reference group. And the reason for that is because this was the group that had the standard lab treatment in terms of the diet. So we're going to use that as the reference group. And then we're going to look at differences between the other diets in that reference group. All right, so in this case, we chose N, N85 as the reference level or the reference group. And we're going to make dummy variables now using these indicator functions for all of the other levels. So in this case, we have uh, the indicator function that constructs the dummy variable for the first explanatory variable. So here, the indicator function says, is the diet for observation I NP? So it's 1 if that was true and 0 if that is false. The second one says, is the diet NR50? So it's a 1 if that's true, it's a 0 if that's false, and so forth. Here, NR50, RR50, and NR40. So notice that there are six groups, and we have to uh, construct dummy variables for one less than we have the number of groups. In this case, we have five dummy variables. And for each of these dummy variables, they are 1 if the statement inside the parentheses is true, and zero if it's false. All right, and once we have these constructed, then we're just going to now run our multiple linear regression, because now we have more than one explanatory variable. We, in fact, have five of them. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to perform the analysis using those, indicate, those dummy variables as our explanatory variables. All right, so if you want to use PROC REG, then you will have to manually construct these dummy variables. And so this is the way that we can do it right here. 
right? So again, we have n n85 as a reference level, and so we're going to create uh, dummy variables for the remainder. In this case, we have uh, x1 is the np diet, x2 is the low pro diet, x3 is the nr50, x4 is the rr50, and x5 is the nr40. And then we just go ahead and run our multiple regression model using proc reg with our response, which is lifetime, is equal to this set of explanatory variables. And if we do that, then we get this output. Here's the output. The output has uh, six estimated parameters for the mean. The first parameter here, the intercept, is the mean for the reference group. So this is the mean lifetime for the NR, uh, N, N85 group. And the other five parameters then are the difference in mean lifetime between the N, N85 group and whichever group corresponded to this explanatory variable. We go back a slide, the first one was NP. So as an example, this negative 5.3 is the estimated difference between the NP lifetime and the N, N85 lifetime. Given that it's negative, this says that the NP group lives on average not as long as the N, N85 group. We can go all the way to the right here and find the p-value. The p-value then is testing the hypothesis that there is no difference in mean lifetime between the N, N85 group and the NP group. Since this p-value is small, we would reject that null hypothesis that there is no difference. All right, so it's in particular using proc reg and manually constructing these dummy variables can be quite laborious, especially if you have lots and lots of groups. So instead of having to construct the dummy variables yourself, you can allow SAS to construct them for you, or pretty much any other statistical software. In this case, we're going to use PROC GLM rather than using PROC REG. And the key piece is that we're going to include a class statement. This is exactly like what we did in using ANOVA or producing an ANOVA analysis when using PROC GLM. So we use a class statement that tells SAS that diet is in fact a categorical variable. And then we have the model statement just as we had before when we were doing ANOVA. Here's our response is lifetime is equal to this diet, which is our explanatory variable. And what SAS knows is just from that statement there, just by putting diet in the class statement, SAS is going to automatically construct the dummy variables for you. Now the issue is that uh, SAS constructs or assigns the last group alphabetically to be the reference level. So in order for SAS to uh, use the reference level that we want it to use, one approach is to just change the notation for that group. So in this case we want N N85 to be the reference level and so we're going to change how dot we're going to change that quantity in our data set in SAS so that there's an, a, a Z in front of the N, N85 to ensure that it's going to be last in our uh, set of diets. The second thing that's different here from what we've done before is we add in a slash solution and this will give us the parameter estimate table just like we get automatically when we use PROC reg. So here's the example. The example here shows that um, now, instead of just having x1, x2, and x3 that we had when we used PROC REG, SAS gives a little bit more informative view of what's going on. The first thing to notice is that the reference level shows up at the bottom of the list with an estimate of zero and no center error t statistic or uh, p-value. Right, so that's how we know which level of our categorical variable SAS is treating as the reference level. So the reference level then, the intercept, the intercept here is the interpretation of the mean lifetime on that uh, reference level diet, so in this case the N, N85 diet. If we go down to the NP row, here we see the negative 5.3 that we saw before. This is the estimate of the difference in mean lifetimes between the NP and the N, N85 group. So if you flip back and forth between this slide and the PROC reg side, what you'll see is that this parameter estimate table down here looks exactly the same. All right, and so I'm just going to end this mini lecture with, again, a visualization of what's going on. 
with these parameters with this multiple linear regression model. So there are six parameters. The first one is an intercept. The intercept represents the estimate of the mean lifetime on the reference level diet. So in that case, this is the N885. That's the star right here. This Then we're, we're drawing a horizontal line through all of the diets at this level because then all of the other parameters, the non-intercept parameters, are associated with a difference between that line and the mean uh, di lifetime on that other diet. So in this case right here, the mean lifetime on the NP diet is shown as a star, and the parameter estimate for that NP parameter is the difference between the horizontal line and that star. All right, I hope that I've uh, at least introduced you to the idea of using dummy variables through indicator functions in order to incorporate a categorical variable into a regression analysis. Thanks.